If you shop online, then you've been served recommendations powered by a recommender system, and you most likely have been on the receiving end of recommendations that don't quite seem to fit your purchase history or likes or profile as they're supposed to. That's what the authors of this paper call a spurious recommendation. Various recommendations occur in recommender systems that are built using the classical approach of low rank factorization of a partially observed user item matrix. Semantically, a spurious recommendation is one that's inappropriate for the user. A concrete example that I'll refer to throughout this video is recommending a horror film to a child. So why should you care about spurious recommendations? Well, a single poor recommendation is enough to give a disastrous user experience and turn your user off your product or service for good. Spurious recommendations occur due to what the authors call folding. The idea is quite simple. Folding occurs when two disparate groups of users and items are embedded erroneously close to unrelated groups in a low-rank embedding vector space. For example, a recommender system may embed 2D vectors for family movies fairly close to vectors for children, which is good. Children have watched nothing but family movies. But the recommender system may also embed or fold vectors for horror films close to these children. Due to their closeness in the embedding space, we'll see family movies recommended for children, but we'll also see recommendations for horror films due to folding. And this is spurious behavior. So folding occurs due to the failure of recommender systems to deal with data missing not at random. So the missing not at random principle says that not all user item pairs have equal likelihood of being unobserved. A child is much less likely to have a missing rating in the family movie genre than they are to have a missing rating in the horror movie genre. So to properly capture missing data, the authors introduce a relatedness measure, which the folding calculation depends on. So folding is calculated by solving weighted alternating least squares twice. So the goal of weighted alternating least squares is to approximate the partially defined user item matrix A with low rank K approximations of user and item vectors. This is achieved by minimizing this cost function alternatingly fixing user factors and solving for item factors and vice versa until the learned factors don't change much. A common choice for the weight matrix W involves attributing a small uniform weight to all unobserved data as shown here. Alpha is a metaparameter that controls the importance of unobserved user item pairs. So first, calculate relatedness, and this is done by solving weighted alternating least squares with a high weight alpha for unobserved ratings. And the relatedness matrix R for all user item pairs can be defined with entry IJ as the max of zero and the cosine similarity between user I and item J. So second step, we train our model and then we calculate folding for this trained model. So given a relatedness measure R, we take the max of zero and the difference between the cosine similarity and the relatedness of user I and item J. Summing over all users and items and dividing by the number of users and number of items in our system, we obtain the amount of folding in our trained model. And note that folding is a badness measure only, and it increases when unrelated pairs are considered similar, but it's not affected when related pairs are considered dissimilar. So the authors experiment on the movie lens 10 million dataset, which has 10 million ratings for about 10,000 movies and 71,000 users. For the relatedness matrix, the authors chose a latent space dimension K of 30 and an alpha of 1, and they train their models varying k and alpha, and they plot root mean squared error and folding as a function of k and alpha. So they find that there's a negative correlation between root mean squared error and folding. So the best root mean squared error is obtained for low alpha, which essentially means missing data is largely ignored. But these good root mean squared error values were associated with high folding. This suggests that the best root mean squared error models have a high propensity to make spurious recommendations. So how do you avoid folding in your model? Well, use a goodness measure like root mean squared error and a badness measure like folding. Optimize for low root mean squared error and low folding and make sure missing data is handled properly. The idea of measuring folding in a recommender system is interesting and easy to implement, but I feel that it relies a bit too much on the definition of relatedness. The choice of alpha and rank values for calculating relatedness are important, but it's not clear to me from the paper how to optimally choose these values. I would love to see some follow-up work on this idea where folding is calculated for datasets other than movie lens.